Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in to another Canna Chat. My name is John Spaulding. I am uh, from G1NBC.com. And uh, today we're broadcasting on the G1NBC Live Facebook page. We are also on the G1N Token account on Steam. And we are on the G1NBC John account on DLive. So welcome, everyone. Um, I'll definitely be checking in on the Vim account and... Uh, the Facebook account. I'll check on all three uh, and, and see if there's anyone chatting with us and, and bringing your questions in, and then I'll have a more streamlined process for doing that as we move forward. Uh, but we are on three channels tonight, and we're taping it too, so you might see it on, on YouTube or on 3Speak as a VOD. Uh, we have citizen scientist Ethan Dean here tonight. He is from the Citizen Science Oral Health Project. Hey, Ethan. Hi, John. How are Good you evening. tonight? I'm awesome, sir. I'm awesome. Good to see you. Good to see you. So this is the third in our initial kind of three-part series, uh, talking about the Citizen Science Oral Health Project. When we Our first one was kind of an overview of the project and an introduction uh, to you, to the community. Uh, last episode, we talked about toxic teeth, and then today we're going to be talking about the CBD side of the business. Absolutely. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. Now, last week, you kind of just started off, and we got into things, and we chopped it up, and before you knew it, the show was over. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I really just won it last week, and uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, after listening to it, I thought there was so much more I want to say on that subject, but uh, tonight we're yeah. going to talk CBD. Okay, let's go. All right, so um, I... Uh, I wasn't the CBD guy. I've been a cannabis guy for the last 10 years, you know, really delving deep into cannabis. Mm -hmm. And uh, so research takes money. So this program needs some money. And uh, I decided I'd get into the CBD because it kind of, it, it, it's, it's cannabis. Okay. Uh, you can get CBD from hops. You can get it from hemp. Um, but anyways, uh, CBD is a. I didn't know you could get it from hemp too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the stuff that's in the stores, um, like your local stores that you just walk into. Mm -hmm. uh, that is probably coming from hemp. Gotcha. Okay. It might be coming from hops. Um, what you get in a dispensary. Uh, is probably marijuana and uh, maybe Charlotte's Web. Are you familiar with uh, the strain Charlotte's Web? No. Or the little girl Charlotte? Um, she... I thought Charlotte was the spider. Well, I, I hope I don't have her name wrong, but it, it, it anyways, I they named the plant after her. Okay. And the little girl was having some, I think, 500 seizures a week. Ah, ah, gotcha, gotcha. And uh, so uh, this group of fellas, they, they bred a strain that is lacking in THCA. Okay. Um, and, and I say that because marijuana plants grow very little THC, and they grow very little CBD. What they grow a lot of is THCA and CBDA. So there's um, well over 100 known cannabinoids. And um, when we decarboxylate, uh, some of these cannabinoids change their structure. So uh, THCA doesn't get you high. So if you eat a raw, raw marijuana, you're not going to get high because it hasn't been decarboxylated. Decarboxylation is when it's heated. So if you're smoking the coal on the end of the joint or mm -hmm. in your pipe, uh, if you're vaping, that's a, uh, some are electronic, some are with a heated up wand. Um, or if you bake it or cook it, right? You get it to a certain temperature, you're going to decarboxylate it. So um, when what people is, are looking What does that mean? 
decarboxylation? Yes. That is the, the, the transference in, in the, those chemical, uh, those cannabinoids, it changes THCA to THC. And that, it's the THC that produces the psychoactive effect. Okay. And the, uh, um, the CBDA also uh, is converted to CBD. So in an, ex in an extraction process, um, you're using heat for, to get a CBD oil. And you would use a, a cold extraction to get the CBDA. Hmm. And then, then there would be um, uh, classifications that uh, people would look for. Uh, so a full spectrum, uh, broad spectrum, and uh, isolate. So uh, there's there's well over a uh, hundred known cannabinoids, and uh, they're discovering more all the time uh recently thcp was discovered that's just been in the news here recently over the last several months and uh so uh the word on that is that it bonds to the receptor 30 times stronger than thc and so uh, i was reading a lot about they were thinking that that's going to make you 30 times higher or, you know, 30 times. But the right. fact is, it's been there all along. They just didn't know it. You know, what's changed? <laughs> right. In, in my in my viewpoint, except that they identified a different different component. So a uh, full spectrum uh, is a CBD oil you might find in a dispensary. However, I believe and I'm, this is been a continual learning curve for me for 10 years so I, sure. I, i'm really digging into the cbd to try and understand it i also believe there's full spectrum cbd from a hemp plant because there's more i, I believe there's more than just cbd there's a little bit of thc in the hemp plant that's how they get yeah. to the uh, uh but it's very minimal so it's that's how they get super to that. low right it's like is it 0 0.01 percent or 0.1 percent I don't know, or one percent. It's point. It's it's low. I I, I, I can't rattle it off. Okay. Um, but I understand you can also get CBD from hops, and I don't think there's any THC in there. From hops that they use in beer. Yes. Or what? Really? I believe so. Okay. Yes. I believe so. Yep. Um. So, and then you have isolate, which is just the, the, the CBD by itself. And um, so based on, based on a lot of things, you can be getting very different products. So that's, sure. uh, that's something to know about, something to look for, and uh, something to pay attention to. And then interestingly enough, there's, um, there's a fair amount of everyday, perfectly legal um, things that have cannabinoid-like uh, compounds. Um, Uh-oh. Yeah, we lost the connection. You're back. Right. So... Um, uh, black pepper is one, uh, flaxseed, uh, hops and mangoes, uh, corn flour, liverwort, chocolate, and there's more that have cannabinoid-like um, compounds. Huh. And, and they're all um, important for immune health. I th th that's one of the more fascinating things is kind of learning about the is it the endocannabinoid system that we all have that is really understudied and and unknown the amount of cannabinoid receptors yes. we have right it's it's uh it's known in the cannabis community it's known in the science community 
Uh, but the general public, in uh, my experience, you start talking endocannabinoid system and they're like, what? What are you talking about? Sure, sure. And uh, it's not being taught. I, I, my understanding is it's not really being taught in med school. And maybe uh, I, I heard about 5% of the uh, educators are, are actually educating on the endocannabinoid system. So even our upcoming doctors are not being educated on it. Right. Yeah, there has and, to be a push. Uh, so it's um, it's important. It's important that our medical providers uh, understand this stuff. Um, driving down I seventy five, the big billboard says uh, third leading cause of death in the U.S. medical errors, and it's got an attorney's uh, website across the bottom. So I, I googled that, I checked it out, and there uh, there's some. There's some statements out there that uh, making that claim, and then there's uh, those. There's some arguments to it too. But uh, the fact that there's a billboard up uh, that it's even anywhere near a third leading cause is uh, alarming to me, and it's bothersome to me that uh, uh, the endocannabinoid system, as I understand, is not being taught to our upcoming physicians, and certainly our our. Uh, our, the physicians we have today are, are behind on it. So, or is anyone teaching it at that level? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm not the expert. I all I know is I've done a little bit of reading on the subject and mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of talk on the subject. So, uh, I'm just basically repeating what I think I know. Okay. Uh, yep. So, um. Oh yeah, we want to make the disclaimer that this isn't uh, medical advice. That's uh, no, this is for information and, yeah. and discussion purposes only. <clears throat> right. So I'm just uh, using my freedom of speech to talk about my experiences with cannabis, uh, and uh, taking this opportunity to share it because it's really important. What kind of feedback have you gotten or, or, or what kind of uh, th things have you gotten in, since kind of working with on the CBD aspect of, of the work that you're doing? Well, I learned how to build the store, get the uh, find a supplier uh, with uh, reputable brands okay. uh, that's able to supply and um, and then learning about all the different products, the different, um, um, so tinctures, there's, uh, which is, you know, oral. Um, then there's, there's lots of topicals from balms and creams and lotions to, uh, patches and probably more. Um, and in different strengths, um, different concentrations, um, and then different sizes and then lots of different brands. Um, there's, uh, there's edibles, there's. Keep going. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just doing a screen share. We'll, it'll come back in a minute after I'm done. Oh, okay. Right on. Um, yeah. So, um, I think I was saying there's edibles. Uh, and, um, and then you have, uh, your pharmaceutical CBD, uh, the Epidiolex. I have no idea what those are. Um, well, Epidiolex is a brand name for a pharmaceutical, um, medicine that your doctor, your, your MD can prescribe for you and you can pick it up at the pharmacy. So it's a pharmaceutical grade CBD. And so that's uh, as pure as a CBD as, uh, as you're gonna get, supposedly, right? I mean, it's the, the most regulated. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so, what else do we want to cover here? I see CBD for cats and dogs. Oh yeah, that that was gonna, I was going to talk about that. That's absolutely correct for the pets. Uh, the same holds true with the uh, with the mouth rinse for oral health. Um, that's uh, also suitable for mammals. So um, we all we all have the issue of oral health. Our cats, our dogs, our friends, our family, and uh, so yes, there are CBD products for the pets. Interesting. There's a there's a. Uh, I see. There's paw balm. There's yeah. cat hemp oil. Yep. Cooling muscle rub. Yes. A hemp patch. What's that? So I, I know we're doing CBD tonight. What's a? What would a hemp patch be used for? Well, that's uh, it has a CBD in it. So you put it on. Uh, an area of your body to relieve pain. Okay. So it's, um, con- it, you know, it's it, it's concentrated in that pad where, where it's going to have a more lasting effect, I believe, is the, the purpose of that. Hmm. So you would leave it on, you put it on in the morning, leave it on all day, put it on at night, maybe to help you sleep. Um, so... Have you gotten any testimonials about uh, any of these products and which ones work or, or which ones are popular or, or which, what do they use different things for? Well, I'm looking for my first sale and uh, I'd be looking for testimonials and uh, people can uh, offer testimonials uh, without making any purchase, right? I mean, if they have experience with a brand mm-hmm. because those are branded products there on the site. Right. And, um, but, um, you know, uh, I encourage anybody to educate themselves and, um, you can search out testimonials. So if you're looking for an answer on a specific product or a specific brand, I would recommend, uh, doing a search for that brand and testimonials. Okay. It's not just tincture. It's not just gummy. It's not just patch. It's, it's the brand. Uh, also, I think is important. And what uh, what, uh, what brands do you use? Uh, I haven't used any of the CBD. Uh, like I said, I, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a I, I, yeah, fan. I meant what brands do you are use? promoting or, or, or serving and, and how did you come to choose them? Well, what I did was I looked for a, uh, a wholesaler with fulfillment and, um, a wholesaler that is carrying reputable brands and, um, has the ability to meet supply. Gotcha. And, uh, so, you know, I've got the, uh, the articles organization for the citizen scientists LLC. I got the EIN number and I'm ready to go open up a bank account. Come okay. to find out that's not so easy. No, it's not. No, uh, it's not. none of the big, none of the big banks are doing it. Uh, I tried the little banks. I tried the credit unions. Uh, ultimately that's what I found was a credit union. Um, and the interesting thing is, uh, I, I stopped driving and I just started calling and, uh, I called this credit union. They said, yes, I went there and they said, no. Why? And because they, I mean, they checked with, they made the calls. They went in the office, they called upper management. They came back they said, no, we will not open an account for CBD. That's high risk. And, uh, so I left. And I go over to the local uh, video store, Family Video, because they got a sign in the window, CBD. Uh, mm-hmm. They got MasterCard, Visa on the door. And I want to know where they're banking. 
Sure. So I, I so on the way there, I called the uh, the credit union because it's a, it's a different uh, office than where the branch is, my local branch. And um, and they got me on hold for so long. I, I finally just went in the, in the store and talked to people in there. And uh, they have no idea because they're a franchise and she just works there and she thinks their banking's out of Illinois. And, uh, but it was, they were actually, the reason that I was on hold so long is they were calling the, the local branch over here to let them know that they would do it. So it took me over a day to find a bank, but uh, banking for the, for the business, but I did it. Okay. And yeah. And another milestone because, uh, after that, all that, I said, well, I guess I can assume that I am your first customer with a CBD business at this branch. She said, actually, you're the first customer at this institution. So hey. that tells me pretty much a big boys game like family video that's got franchises all across the country and, right? and they're willing to take a risk right so that's good yeah but I, so that was uh that was a surprise and then an accomplishment so yeah when was uh, that mm, that was quite recently um I, I don't think it's been two months all right nice job thank you mm-hmm yeah, so um, so I figured if I'm going to be carrying these CBD products, I, I better get knowledgeable about it. <laughs> and um, nah, so um, I there's a lot of benefits from the CBD. I, I, I want to clarify that there's a lot of people getting benefits from the CBD. Uh, some of it might be placebo because there's a placebo effect in medicine. But I, I think there is real actual benefits in CBD. Uh, it's being it's being scientifically documented. So um, like with the Epidiolex, because they had to go through clinical trials, FDA approval to be a pharmaceutical medicine. So that was a good place for me to start when I wanted to know about negative side effects right right because that's a big thing with uh pharmaceuticals is that they list those negative side effects mm -hmm. the doctors know what they are and 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 how to deal with it and and uh so uh come to find out there are a lot more negative side effects with cbd than i would have thought interesting um and um, I did a quick scan I, like I did. Yeah, go ahead. You got you. You go ahead. Oh, OK. When, when I Google negative side effects for CBD, uh, I get a long list. So when I Google negative side effects for THC, I get a short list and very different. Mm -hmm. That's so definitely true. Um, so um, for. Uh, Let's see, where did I write it down here? So negative effects for um, mar for THC, for marijuana. Uh, it can lower your blood pressure. So people with low blood pressure that are on blood pressure uh, medicines, you know, that could be a negative thing. Uh, memory, uh, red eyes, anxiety, mm. paranoia, panic attacks, hallucinations, and... Uh, irritability when they're coming down and uh, disorientation. So pretty much what I would have guessed. First, for, now then. Let's not forget that the, the National Institute of Health has done hundreds and hundreds of studies only looking for the negative aspects of marijuana. Right on, gotcha. So, so now, you got over a hundred cannabinoids, but uh, CBD, cannabino cannabidoil, is a rage. And you've taken, you've taken this one com compound that, that's in there with literally uh, hundreds of other cannabinoids, as well as terpenes and flavonoids and 
ligands and, and more that work together um, in what's, what, what's termed as uh, the entourage effect. There's a synergy when, when those are all combined together. Virtually all, all the studies that, that look at uh, if this compound of the marijuana plant is good for A, B, or C, it's always better when the other compounds are are, are, are used with it. Okay. So isolating the CBD, CBD isolate, um, is showing a, a completely different list of negative side effects. So, you know, with the, with the THC, the marijuana, you know, memory, red eyes, blood pressure, anxiety, paranoia, panic attacks, you know, that that's all going together. And then hallucinations, disorientation, and irritability. Uh, but with the CBD isolate, there's a lot. And I, I I didn't write I didn't write them all down, but I just wrote down some of the more troubling ones: digestive issues, diarrhea, um, and then appetite. Um, apparently, there, there's um, people experiencing weight loss, so that could be really good for people who want to lose weight. Yeah, I'm listening. But people that are thin. And need to put on weight. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. That could be a real problem for him. And um, and apparently, there uh, it, it, it this is triggering some kind of mechanism um, in the person that is uh, just making them stop wanting to eat, and they're getting um, what's the term uh, anorexic and uh, wasting. How do we know all the negative side effects? We don't know all the positive effects. Oh, there's a lot of positive, um, <clears throat> but very little. I just wondered, like, like you, you know, your your medical associations and things like that. Well, they they darn sure know all the negatives, and they can list those all out, but they don't have any. You know, like we talked about earlier, we don't study the endo uh, cannabinoid system in the body. We don't publish any research on how it affects people for different diseases, but we have certainly have a long list of why we shouldn't do it. Well, it's, it's not mainstream. It's not mainstream to the general public. It's becoming more and more mainstream in science, but it's specialized. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, the, there, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of study been done on the negative side effects of marijuana, and the list is so different than the negative side effects with uh, uh, CBD. Uh, another one that's troubling is liver. People getting uh, their their liver enzymes elevated, mm. and then uh, from CBD. marijuana or from CBD? CBD. Okay. Right, you, and you're not you're. You're not fi I'm not finding that. I, I'm not hearing that with marijuana, but I find it with the CBD. So uh, the um, the dosing and your individual makeup is important, but apparently anybody's makeup, there is dosing issues where uh, they bring on these negative side effects, these bad negative side effects that you just don't see or hear about in the research with uh with marijuana right gotcha so are, are are there any overlap from your research that you've done are there any overlap of uh side effects um well um it's interesting um All side effects are just negative side effects because I think there's more overlapping with the positive side effects, pain relief, um, appetite. Uh, well, maybe not. 
I think that depends on the study and the person. That's probably the wrong thing to say, but um, overlapping primarily what comes to mind for me is pain. Um, and there was a recent, um, oh, but that's the positive, the negative. Yeah, negative is what I was thinking about. Well, THC has been um, uh, touted to uh, interrupt sleep. So um, I'm seeing that with the CBD. They call it sleepiness. Um, So people are walking around feeling tired, feeling like they need to sleep, feeling lethargic. Um, Yet can't sleep. I don't know that they're not sleeping well. I, I ha- that I haven't seen, but I haven't read that. But what I've read is sleepiness, which is well in their awake state, they're they're not as alert. They're feeling drowsy. They're feeling like they want to sleep. Um, and you can get that with a um, with a very good. Mar- uh, indica marijuana. Okay. They call it couch lock. Hmm. And they smoke a little, or you, you know, you, you consume you consume some good indica, and it's like I don't want to go anywhere. I'm just gonna sit. That they happened that to me. Couch. That happened to me in college. Yeah. I had couch lock. Yeah, so you had some good indica. <laughs> if you had some good sativa, you'd have been up dancing. Ah, gotcha. Okay, now I know the difference. Yeah, and it's uh, it's also um, stimulates the brain, the sativa. You know, more more alert. And a hybrid. Um, say again. Uh, oh yeah, the hybrids. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many different uh, different strains out there, and combinations of and. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot to experiment with. There's a lot to enjoy, and uh, and benefit from health-wise. All right. But I see more overlapping on the positive side. So there was um, a recent study. Uh, I could be mistaken. I think it came out of Denmark, where. Uh, CBD, CBG, CBN, and one of the others, there was four of them, uh, they were tested uh, against bacteria. And the, with the study, they I think they used um, some type of a toothpick to remove uh, bacteria from these uh, subjects' mouth, put it in a Petri dish, and then use these different uh, cannabinoids um, and, uh, let the bacteria do its stuff. And what they found was that these, um, cannabinoids that they tested were all more effective than traditional mouth rinse and toothpaste. Okay. So we're kind of bringing it back to the citizen science oral health project. Well, that's one of the first, uh, first studies that I've seen that leads that way. Sure. And uh, so that was, um, that put a smile on my face when I read that. It sure did. And right. and that's recent. That's just in the last, that's just within the last couple of months, at least for me. I, I can't say that I really checked out the date on it, but I believe it was very recent. And if not, shame on me for not knowing about it sooner, but was actually uh, an associate who uh, sent it over to me. So okay. that was great. Yeah. Any other tips, tricks, or things you were going to share on CBD? No, I think uh, I think that kind of covers it, um, at least for what I'm prepared to talk about at the moment. Okay. So then let's go through and just give a little promo for uh, your website. I'll bring it up here and kind of a closeout of uh, of today. All right. Awesome. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. And we're so, showing your website right now. All right. So uh, anybody who lives in Michigan 
or wants to vacation in Michigan for a month or two, you're welcome to participate in the Citizen Scientist Oral Health Project, where you can pay a fee for the consulting and the participating, and I can gift you the mouth rinse. So if you're uh, suffering with uh, some poor oral health conditions, uh, bleeding gums, uh, plaque, or uh, losing gum tissue, and you would like to participate, uh, please contact with me and uh, we'll make arrangements to uh, get that all happening. Um, any purchase from the website all goes to promote the program. So we're looking to get to clinical trials uh, with the mouth rinse. And uh, initially that'll be with rodents. Um, to get the clinical trials with humans gets very expensive and uh, turns into eight to 10 years. Um, but through the Citizen Scientist uh, Oral Health Project, I hope to get a lot of good investigation done with uh, as tightly controlled um, uh, as I can. So uh, samples from each mouth, uh, each mouth rinse uh, will be saved in a clean, pure way that can be analyzed later. So we get the results, we get the testimonials. Uh, we will also have the, uh, the medicine that was used uh, for those particular individuals. So if we're, we see uh, one one of the proprietary formulations is working better than the other. Well, we want to pay attention to that because that's what I'm after is to find the absolute best mouth rinse. And it could be that it's a different mouth rinse for different people. And it could be that um, we want to mix it up a little bit for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one would be for at nighttime uh, to help you get a good night's sleep. So. CBN is degraded THCA and okay. CBN is, uh, in my experience and in the research, uh, very good for sleep and sleep is when your body rejuvenates. So getting a good night's sleep is so important to your overall health and, uh, and building up your, uh, your immune system through the aid of your endocannabinoid system. So all purchases go to benefit the program. Uh, anyone who can participate goes to benefit the program. We're looking to get the clinical trials and uh, we're looking at about $250,000 needs, needs to be raised for that. And uh, so this is a chance for everybody to have a say where their dollars go. The National Institute of Health has a 32 million or billion we talked about it last week whatever it is i think it's billion it's huge for research and almost none of it goes to cannabis and the majority of it that does or has is for the negative aspects so this is a chance for anybody to have a say where their dollar goes and right i think it couldn't, it couldn't be a better uh a better spot and um, for, for every person who pays to participate in the program, I'm going to donate to someone who cannot afford to pay. So, you know, we talked about how expensive just one root canal and one crown can be. So you people out there in your 30s, now is really the time to be taking care of your teeth. When you get to be my age, it might be a little bit too late. I've lost all of my molars. Mm. All those root canal teeth, all those crown teeth, the bridges, they're all gone. And I've been on an amazing health recovery. I'm so passionate about this because that toxic tooth was taking my life. 30 years of numerous chronic conditions that just kept getting worse and worse till I was down to 130 pounds, no strength, sweating day and night, and sleeping most of the time. And I am a different man today. So 
and my brother died from oral cancer. And, and ironically, today's his birthday. He would have been 60. Oh. He, he died four years ago, the end of this month. I'm sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. But, you know, this is, it was, it was oral cancer. And, uh, and I know it could have been prevented. And, and there, I'm trying to do this for humanity. Yep. And, the, yep. and, and, and all, those experiences have kind of brought you to where you are today. So um, I appreciate it. I appreciate your perspective. Thanks for coming in and talking with us on uh, Canna Chat. It's been my pleasure, John. And uh, yeah. I'll look to come back again in the future. Yeah, for sure. That sounds good. So oralhealthwithcannabis.com. Make sure to check out the Citizen Science Oral Health Project and get in touch with Ethan Dean if you have any questions. We'll put the links to those on the VOD as well. And thank you, guys, thank you everyone, for tuning in. Any last words? I wish everybody the best oral health and a blessed life. Thank you for your time. Thank you for helping me get the message out, John. All right. Sounds good, Mr. Dean, the Oral Health with Cannabis, and Ethan, Citizen Scientist Dean. And this is Canna Chats for the G1 NBC Cannabis Network, and we will see you all next Wednesday. Bye-bye. <laughs>